Hello there, welcome to lesson number seven in our series on creating earrings using Fluid Designer for 3D printing. Um, in today's lesson we're going to show you how you can use Bezier curves and Bezier circles to create a, an earring. So um, if you'd like to start off Fluid Designer we go to uh, Learning Projects, Jewelry Projects, Earrings and uh, if you scroll down to lesson 07 and drag and drop that onto the workspace you'll see that uh, this is the object that we're going to uh, manipulate today. Um, I'm just going to switch on the screencast key, so any key presses I make should be displayed here, and remind you that the help instructions are in the uh, window here on the left, if you don't want to watch the video and you just want to uh, read through the help instructions. So, what have we got here? Well, we've actually got uh, a Bezier curve on the left-hand side here, and that's linked to a Bezier circle, so at the moment we can manipulate this object, well as you can see we can only manipulate it in large chunks at the moment. Um, what's happening is as, as I try and move this control point, this is a control point, as I move it horizontally it's only moving one centimetre at a time. The grid's in centimetres at the moment and by default this is set up with a feature called the snap-on. So the snap means that it only will snap to the grid increments. Now if I point at this uh, control point and zoom in with the mouse, the snap is on when you see this uh, magnet lit up. Now I can just snap by millimeters. So you can see we've got a, a lot of control over this object because there are a, a lot of control points along the edge of the object. Um, we can delete control points if we want. We can highlight a control point and press X on the keyboard and delete that vertices and that will take out a control point. If we wanted to add a control point in what we do is we hold down the shift key select two uh, uh, adjacent control points or we could select all of them along the uh, length of the Bezier curve and then if we click the right mouse button we can subdivide so you can see what I've done there is I've put the control point back in now that I just deleted. So you can add and you can delete control points in, uh, in Fluid Designer. Um, now this object um, is, is meant to be an earring and as you can see it's in two parts. So uh, I'm not going to manipulate this shape anymore. You can play around as much as you want with it. Um, what I'm going to do is to uh, press the tab key to come out of edit mode and uh, the yellow line is in fact the Bezier uh, curve. Um, the main body of the object, that's the grey bit here, and also uh, is a Bezier um, circle and we can't print those objects. So what we need to do is we need to change this object once we're happy with the profile, once we're happy with the shape, change it to a mesh. So we do that by going to Tools, Object Tools and converting it to a mesh. And so the Bezier curve on the left hand side, if we just go into edit mode now, it has no effect on it, won't change it anymore. So uh, come out of edit mode with Tab. With the Bezier curve highlighted I can just press X on the keyboard and delete it. Um, so what do I want to do now? Well. I want to fill in the bottom of this uh, object at the moment. I need to put in a face there to fill it in. And what I'm doing is I'm just zooming in by scrolling the center mouse button. And with the um, earring, the main body of the earring highlighted, if we go into edit mode, so we press the tab key on the keyboard, so we've not got it highlighted, press the tab key on the keyboard. Um, so, as you can see, there are all these dots at the moment. Now, these dots are vertices. They're the corner points of each of the faces. The grey bit is a face. The line is called an edge. The dot in the corner is a vertices. If I click the um, right mouse button, I want to change the selection mode from selecting the points to selecting an edge. Because what I want to do is I want to select an edge all the way around the bottom of this object. Now I'm going to need to zoom in I think to do this. Um, so there's an edge, there's an edge, there's an edge, but I want to select it all the way around and the way to do that is if I just zoom in again, if I hold down the Alt key on the keyboard and select an edge, you'll see that we've got a yellow line now all the way around the bottom of the object. 
Um, so what I've done is I've selected multiple edges all the way around the bottom and what I want to do now is to fill those in and we fill in by pressing F on the keyboard for fill. Um, so we've uh, filled in the bottom of the object there. So we can now come out of edit mode. And if we go to view and uh, front now, <coughs> and just scrolling back out with the center mouse button, what we now need to do is uh, we need to focus on this object at the top here. And this object has, has been pre-designed for you and it's meant to be one millimeter across. So we're assuming that you have a, a one millimeter internal diameter stud and this bit would go through your ear and you put a stud on the back here to hold it in place. Um, now if we look at the end of this object you'll notice that this is also open so um, we need to uh, do the same thing with this object uh, we need to fill it in so if we go to well first of all we need to change it to uh, a mesh so tools object tools convert it to a mesh um, we need to uh, press the tab key on the keyboard to go into edit mode and uh, we need to change the selection mode to edge select again is that object highlight it doesn't quite look right that um, so if I hold down the alt key and press there yeah it has done it um, it's highlighted the um, edge all the way around the end of this object so as we've just done it at the bottom of the main body of the hearing we've just done I'm just trying to do the same thing here because we need to fill that in so if we press F on the keyboard, we can add a face, we can fill in the end of that object. So if we now go to view and front again, and just scroll out, and press the tab key to come out of edit mode, so we filled in the end of this object here. Now what we want to do is to join these two objects together. And... Uh, if I just point the mouse at the uh, join point there and if I just zoom in now remember we have got the snap feature on here and that's going to be quite important because uh, this gap here I've preset it to you for you at one millimeter <coughs> so if you were actually creating these objects it's very important that you do get the sizing correct when uh, joining objects together so if I just click on that object if I just move it down one okay and zoom in now you can see there that the objects are not perfectly sized they're not perfectly sized um, but uh, I'm pretty sure that Netfab Basic is going to sort this out for us so what we want to do is we want to join these two objects together so um, what we need to do is highlight the first object, that's the clip at the top. Hold down the shift key and highlight the main body of the object as well. So we've got the two objects highlighted here. And then if we go to um, Tools, Object Tools, and we're going to join the two objects together. Join the two objects together. Now that's not the most uh, accurate way of combining objects um, there is a feature in fluid designer a modify feature uh, called a boolean modifier that's a, a more accurate way of doing it um, but we are showing you this join method as a kind of simple method and if we zoom in there you can't see the join at the moment um, but there is a join there and it's not a perfect join if you try to print this object at the moment it wouldn't work but we've got Netfab Basic to help us out. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this object, take it over to Netfab Basic, and you're going to see that there's going to be an error up here, and Netfab will fix it for us and stitch these two objects together. Um, so you know what we're trying to show you in this lesson is um, that, that there is this command called join, and as long as you use Netfab, there's a good chance that that will work. The thing about the modifier, the Boolean modifier, it's a little a little bit more complicated. I mean, you will come across it in some of the lessons that we've done, but we just want to introduce you to this concept. So if we go to File and uh, Save As, scroll up through the menu system,
go to jewelry projects earrings so it's 07 lathe shape earring save that one as a blender file and we now need to export it in a printable file format export it to the desk uh, sorry export it as a wavefront object format uh, we like to do it to the desktop so it's 07 lathing shape earring export it to the desktop and uh, if you then go to netfab basic and go to project and open and go to the desktop lathing shape earring and open it you'll see you get a warning red triangle and there's probably a number of issues here this is probably not correctly filled in and as you can see as i was ex expecting where these two objects meet there are some issues so um <coughs> not to worry pretty sure netfab will sort it out so extras and repair the part and as you can see there is a yellow line here and that's telling us that there are some problems so if we just scroll NetFab across and update, you can see we've got a couple of holes and we've got 144 border edge problems. But if we run automatic repair and execute it and click update, <coughs> you'll see that those problems have gone away. Now it is important that if you're joining two objects like this together, that you do try and get the sizes almost exactly right, as close as possible. Not just rely on NetFab. Um, but you will need to re rely on NetFab as well. So if we apply the repair, there it is. We've got rid of the warning red triangle. So if you go to part, export the part as a wavefront object and uh, export it to the desktop. Um, there we are. We save it as 07, lathing shape earring repaired. And that's the printable file format now. Now, if we um, if we just go back to uh, Fluid Designer and uh, if we help open up a new document, um, if we go to File and New, uh, and then if we go to File and Import a Wavefront object, and if we import it from the desktop, I'm going to import the file that's just been repaired by NetFab Basic. So, if we go Import OBJ file this time and um colors a bit weird so i'll just uh, change this option here to material and uh, if we just view that from the front now and i'm just pointing at the uh, location where we join the two items together and just scrolling the mouse to zoom in so if i just highlight the uh, object and if i just press the tab key to go into edit mode um and press the A key to deselect uh, all the uh, points on the object. I'll just move it down a little bit further here so we can see. So this is where we joined. Now because the two objects, the dimensions that I set were pretty much the same. They weren't 100% perfect because uh, NetFab had to stitch up the object somewhere along this line and fix it for us. Now we can't actually see really anything that's been fixed at that point i've just switched to wireframe mode there and i'm just zooming in and we really can't see what netfab's actually done um, that's only that repair and that connection has only worked really well because my clip had a diameter here of one millimeter and the top part of my uh, earring also had a diameter of one millimeter so if you're going to try and recreate this kind of object, you do need to make sure that these dimensions are going to match up when you join them. You will still have a problem, whatever you do, however accurate you are, um, and you will need to use NetFab to fix it. Um, so I'll just switch back to material mode again and press the tab key to come out of edit mode. Now the other thing to take into account here is that this object as a solid is probably going to be a little bit too heavy to be an earring. Um, if you do really want to get into earring design and not just uh, learning how to use Fluid Designer, you are going to have to take into account the weight of an object like this. Um, it may well be better to leave a hole at the bottom and to, um, in, in, so instead of putting a hole, uh, filling a hole in at the bottom, it may well be better to actually use a solidify modifier and make the shell of this um, object one millimeter thick and uh, that pr 
probably is a better way to do it to keep the weight of the object down. But anyway, that's the end of this lesson. Thank you.